a tough one. I'm telling you. Yeah. Drink good? All right. Flow down to 3-5 Toronto's Hip Hop. What's poppin'? It's your boy, Lynx, and I got a special guest in the building. Got my guy, Galan, in the building. What up, bro? Chilling, chilling, man. How's everything? I'm good, man. Welcome back to the six. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Now, this is your what? Your third time here? I think, yeah. It's like my third time, maybe fourth if you count, like, not doing a show. But uh, right, it's, right, it feels right. good to be back. I feel like I get a different taste of the city every time I'm here. Everyone back. always says that, right? Yeah. Everyone always says Now, what do you? what are the top three things you love about the city? Uh, I mean, I really like the Indian food. If you, you know, fat, yo, for some Indian B. Anytime you down oh, for some right. butter chicken, I got you. Yeah, it's crazy. Hey, we don't we don't have that kind of like we have good like decent Indian food in the in the states. I feel like, um, right, right, right. but you know, it's just it's a, a different vibe. You know, when I come up here, so no doubt. Uh, and then I, you know, I just like how subtly different it is from, you know, like a, a New York or a Seattle. Like right. it doesn't. And people always ask me like, oh, how do you describe it? And I can't really. I feel like to me it has like a little bit of a West feel. Okay. But in the okay. east, it's like very, you know, because culturally it's very east, and the people are very upfront. Right. Um. It's just so much of its own thing. It's inspiring. No doubt. Know? No. Seeing that you love Indian food, would you actually ever travel to India? Uh. Yeah. Why yeah. not? Yeah. Okay. I definitely. Yeah. Definitely would. Right. Right. Definitely right. Would. I think the. Uh, I would like to do it on like a vacation, so I could really get a taste. Yeah, of everything, exactly. You know? yeah, yeah. I would yeah. hate to just go for like a week and do like a you know series of different like one offs and press runs. Right. Right, right, uh, right. But if I could like spend some time on vacation, get like a real taste of it, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, I, I actually been to India a lot. I'm like my parents are from India, and the thing is, when you go to India, you got to go for at least about a month to experience. Exactly, it. that's India what I hear. Itself, right? Exactly, right. That's dope. All right, so you're back in Toronto. The dope thing is, you you know, you're on your own tour now. That's right. So yeah. how does that feel? You headlining your own tour? I mean, it feels great, man. I haven't done it since really like 2016, 2017. You know, so right. uh, in fact, I'm 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 playing the same venue that I played in 2016. So it right. was like um, I didn't sell it out the first time, but I sold it out this time. So right. it's it's uh, it feels good to be back, man. It's it feels like it's uh, starting to kind of get everything back on the back on the road. And uh, when I took a little bit of a break, it was hard to creatively find my footing. And now yeah, that the album's yeah. out. Right. Um, and that, you know, I have the first kind of few shows under my belt. I'm really excited to keep it rolling. That's dope. Now, speaking yeah. of the album, uh, you dropped it back in October. Yeah, that's right. Right now. I know the fans are asking, when is it going to be the next album for you to drop? Definitely not in three years. You know, I've been working on <laughs> working yeah. on a lot of things. You took a long uh, break. It was right? tough, man. I think no, there, I get that. there were a lot of things behind the scenes, too, that right. were a little bit kind of volatile. So right, right, right. it was it was tough, you know, to to get the motivation and get back to the place that I felt like I was in when I made the first album back in 20, you know, 15, 2016. Which happens. Which happens. Exactly. So I'm definitely back on track. Um, I've been working on a bunch of things. I think this is going to be the year that people kind of see the the creative gates open now that I'm free of the pressures of having to do a follow-up album. Right. And, you know, everything behind the scenes is back on track and cool. So, uh, and I've been experimenting with a lot of sounds that I didn't really get to to try on either my first album or right. even this album. Right, right Collaborating right. with people that uh, I've always wanted to do something with. So it feels good. Well, that's dope. Now you've worked yeah. with artists such as John Legend. Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah. now is there anybody that I you look forward to working with? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I've done a lot with Babyface, uh, right. but nothing, nothing's come legend. out. Legend. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's, True he's legend. probably yeah. one of my favorite artists of all time, if not right, right, right. the favorite artist of all time. I feel like he always does his thing right. um, so unapologetically, and it's always been inspiring to me to see somebody do it like right. that. Right, right, right. But there are a lot of cats in, that I've looked up to from, like, the mid-2000s. Uh, right. I got to work with T-Pain earlier this year. Dope, um, dope, yeah. And then, you know, work with Black this year, right. too. So right. it was like a combination of working with my peers that I never quite got a chance to vibe on anything with right, right, really right. and then working with those people that i was so used to hearing their voice on the radio i just didn't even think it would be possible for us to be in the same room that's yeah and that's so. dope like now like you said you know working with your peers and one now so when you're working with somebody like babyface or t-pain what is the one thing or two things that you've taken away from that from that experience i mean man with t-pain it's just confirmation of how much of a genius he is you know i, I always True. i looked up to t-pain and and the dream you know when i yeah, was yeah. listening to a lot of you know just a little bit left of mainstream R&B just because of how they, they layer everything. You know, I, I liked ambient music and alternative music because you could like hit the, the like seventh notes and you could like right, layer right, falsettos right. on top of things. And right. the way they do it is so stylistic. Yeah, um, yeah. And it just confirmed to me that it's, you know, just a gift that he has. You can just right. take a beat and just make it T-Pain-ified. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah. Um, and I work with my peers. It feels like it's, you know, in my head for so long, I had this feeling of like, 
because my music was a little bit weird and it okay. didn't necessarily fit in the box that maybe everybody was at this party that I just wasn't invited to. Right. I'm a big fan of your music and I wouldn't call Thank it weird. You. I would say it was unique. <laughs> I would yeah, say exactly. it, was, it was unique to me in a good way. Right. Thank you. Thank and you, the man. fact that you said that, you know, you started working with your peers and I guess, you know, I guess it became more normal to other people then. Exactly. In a way. Exactly. Right. All right. So let's take it back for a second. Uh, born in Washington, D.C. That's right. Uh, moved DMV. to Columbia, Maryland. Uh, you now you're now living in LA. Yeah, yeah, I just moved okay. over to Pasadena. And you started recording songs in middle school. Yeah, man, but you dude, don't, you middle don't school. Hear that. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Oh, bro, I mean, you know, I I, I had this like this tower computer upstairs in my room and I right. used to just, I, I didn't talk to anybody really when I was a kid. Like right, I had right. my friends and my different right. friend groups, but I was very quiet, very qu closed off. Right, right. And so I write these songs and, and send them to my friends and they would, you know, kind of either not say anything because I didn't have anything nice to say or they True. would, they would be like, yo, this is trash. Like, right, right, you gotta, right, right. Do, you gotta yeah, do something yeah, else. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so I, you know, I, I just sent an email to myself and, you know, I think recently I went back like 10 years, 12 years in my email and, and, and heard some things that, Probably should be deleted forever, but you know, yeah, yeah it was it was a good way to express myself and and experience that catharsis for the first time, and no it doubt. just carried over into the, my my approach for making uh, my first albumology and my second album, Sweet Insomnia. Right now, was family a lot of influence of, as far as you getting into music, or I, just I kind of one of these sheep, things bro. that you just wanted to do? It's crazy. I, I yeah, none of my no one else in my family is musical. Um, right. You know, I was always just kind of on my own with it, but. You know, I, I, I just, I, I had this feeling of, I had so many things that I liked, you know, right. I, I liked anime, I liked manga, right, uh, which right, is right. cool now, but you know, back then it really wasn't like that. Right, right, right. Uh, and I, I just saw, I, I saw myself as so many different things than just like what, you know, a, a stereotype would consider like an R&B artist should be, you know? Right, right, right. Um, and it's great to live in this time where R&B is so opened up and it's, it's so many different sounds, so many different vibes. Right, right, right. Um, but back then I just got so much fulfillment from putting a bunch of different pieces of things together and making something that didn't exist really before that no i doubt. Could flow 935 channels hip-hop your boy links now you're in the city uh is there any artist that you're familiar with from the six that potentially that you might want to work with or anybody that you vibe into yeah i mean you know uh you know daniel caesar is, is a genius True. you know right? so yeah um and, and you know to to do that collaboration with brandy like that yeah. um it, it, I think that we're coming from a very similar place, right, you know, right, especially right. when you talk about being feeling like a little bit of a black sheep, you know, right. in the industry or just in general, subverting stereotypes, right. um, not being afraid to just kind of make the kind of music that you want to listen to, right, you know, right, even right. if it's not what is hot at the time, you know. Right. right. Um, so yeah, but I, I think Toronto has definitely been a haven of those types of artists who come out. No doubt. Um, and just kind of do whatever they want to do. And that's yeah. inspiring to see for real. No doubt. And I can actually agree with you on that in a sense where you and Daniel's style, it, it, you know, can be very similar as well. Definitely. The same yeah. type of vibe, which is dope. Yeah. Which is definitely dope. All right. So we talked about you liking butter, uh, sorry, Indian food. I was going to say butter right. chicken. Indian food. <laughs> butter chicken too, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we talked about, you know, you being on your own tour now. Um, and, uh, you know, we're going to be waiting for another album. I know you can take your time, which is dope. But yeah. I know the fans I'm not going to take too much time, though. I got, I've been working on a lot of different things. I just got to figure out what this what this thing is. Right, 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 right. But but, but before the year's up, there's going to be a couple of things. All right, last question. So now when you're in the studio, like making music or whatnot, ideally, are you one of those artists where when you go in the studio, Studio and you're just working you're just banging song after song after song after song or Not is it kind of really. like you know one two records let me just work on this one and then it's a combination you know like I, right. I i used to beat myself up a lot because i was used to hearing the you know the the dude like even neo has like a lyric he's like oh i only wrote one song yeah and it's like yeah. oh you gotta write ten thousand songs in a day right but i just have like a bunch of different vibes and right. you know some of them are beats some of them are like instrumentals that i work on with right. with you know homies and then um I'll, I'll like write lyrics to one and then maybe mm -hmm. a different one. I'm just looking at melodies and then another right. one I got to, you know, link up and do it in the room. So mm -hmm. it's just, it's just a bunch of different things, but I've, I've been switching back and forth uh, between right. vibes lately instead of trying to like put everything into one song and make it the most perfect thing it could possibly be. Cause you got to take some space in order to really realize what it's supposed to be at the end of the day. No yeah. doubt. Well, listen, uh, thanks for coming through my guy. You're course, always man. welcome. A message to your fans. I, uh, I'm not going to take three years anymore to make, <laughs> to make a project. Yeah. All that's gone. And I, right. I hope that you uh, feel excited about this, as excited about this new stuff that I'm about to show right. uh, as I do. No doubt. Flow 93.5, Toronto's Hip Hop, your boy Lynx. We got Grammy nominated Galant in the building. Thank you, my guy, for coming through. Absolutely. You're Thank always you. welcome back to the city. You're always welcome back to Flow anytime. All right? Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. No doubt.